which ingredients am I required to disclose on a Canadian MSDS? Welcome to another installment of Nextrag on Compliance. My name is Mike Moffat. I'm the Director of Communication here at Nextrag Compliance. So recently a client asked me, I said, okay, well if you've got a mixture that it's made up of a number of ingredients, how do you decide which of those ingredients you need to disclose on a Canadian MSDS? It's actually a fairly nice straightforward question because the answer is given in section 13 of the Hazardous Products Act. So there are a couple steps that you have to, to follow. The first is you need to examine Canada's ingredient disclosure list. This is a list of a few thousand different chemicals. Uh, so you need to see if your ingredients appear on that list. If they do, they will be given a threshold of either 0.1% or 1%. So suppose you look up formaldehyde, either by name or by the CAS number uh, 50-00-0. Turns out it's on the list and it has an ingredient disclosure limit of 0.1%. So what this means is if formaldehyde makes up more than uh, as much or more than 0.1% of your mixture, you need to disclose it on your MSDS. If it's less than 0.1%, you do not. So similarly, we have a 1% disclosure limit for other uh, ingredients. So you look up, say, acetone. Acetone has an IDL value of 1%. So again, what this means is if acetone makes up 1% or more of your mixture, you need to disclose that ingredient. If it's less than 1%, you do not. But only a few thousand chemicals are on the IDL. Many are not. They're either not because they're not considered hazardous or they simply haven't, just simply haven't made it to the list, you know, because there are hundreds of thousands of different ingredients out there. So then what do you do? If it's not on the list, you have to see whether or not it would be considered a hazardous component under WIMIS. So you need the WIMIS classification for that component. Once you have the WIMIS classification, you see whether or not, first of all, it falls under most, but not all, D2A, category, uh, D2A hazard categories. If it does, then it has a disclosure limit of 0.1%. If it's not one of most of the D2A categories, but instead is either D1A or D1B, uh, the small dose category of D2A, or D, well, any of the D2Bs, then it's going to have a disclosure limit of 1%. So again, if it's below 1%, if you, that ingredient is below 1% of your mixture, you do not need to disclose it. So it turns out you're going to have to disclose quite a few of your ingredients on a Canadian MSDS. Well, this naturally leads up to a follow-up question. It says, well, look, it looks like I'm pretty much giving away most of my recipe on my MSDS, how, you know, how can I protect this information from my competitors? Because I don't want them simply copying my recipe, copying my product, and you know, coming out with a Me Too product. And there are a few ways you can protect your confidential information in Canada. The first is by simply don't disclose things you don't need to disclose. So if your ingredient is either considered non-hazardous or it falls under the threshold. So you have formaldehyde at 0.05% or acetone at 0.7%, don't disclose those because you don't need to. Secondly is to use WIMIS ranges. So in the, the, the WIMIS regulations, in the uh, CPR, there are 13 different ranges you can use for your chemical components. So instead of saying, look, I've got acetone, in this formulation at 3.728%, that's too much information. Instead, you use one of the WIMIS ranges. You can say, okay, acetone is in this mixture, but is that between one and 5% or three and 7%? You know, wh whatever one of the uh, WIMIS ranges apply. Finally, you can apply to a Canadian agency known as HIMRIC for a trade se secret application. So if you have a genuine trade secret and you can convince HIMRIC of this, what they'll do is they'll issue you a trade secret number which you can put on your MSDS instead of putting on the component. In reality, this is, it's quite difficult to pull off. Most of our clients haven't bothered, but it is a third option out there. So I hope you find this video informative. Um, I'm always looking for additional questions to answer in this video, so if you have any questions, please send them my way to info, I-N-F-O, at nextreg.com. Take care.
This presentation and all the information contained herein is not intended to replace or be used in place of the judgment of a qualified regulatory compliance professional. The opinions expressed are those of NextReg compliance at the time the presentation was recorded. Regulations and interpretations of regulations can change rapidly, so please consult a qualified regulatory compliance professional before starting any project. This presentation is presented for educational purposes and is therefore supplementary and not to be considered exhaustive. NextReg Compliance, its officers, directors and employees hereby disclaim any and all responsibility for any loss, injury, damage or expense directly or indirectly arising out of or relating to use or reliance on this presentation or the material contained in this presentation.